there are so many important things that I want to share with you about what exactly high profile, moderate profile, low profile implants, what it means. I think there are, are a lot of really good questions, but some misconceptions on exactly what it means to have or choose one profile versus another. There is a very specific way that I go about approaching how to choose the right implant. And it's oversimplification just to say, I want something that looks more fake, so I want high profile, or I want something that looks more subtle, so I want low profile. And this is because anatomy in women is so different when you compare one woman next to another. And so you can actually have one woman with a high profile implant in that can actually look quite natural and subtle compared to another woman who has a high profile implant who looks very augmented. The same can also be true for moderate profile implants, low profile implants. So I wanted to help you understand the profiles of implants a little bit better. I thought the best way to do this was to just choose one type of profile and then show you the different widths. A very common question that I've seen in regards to implant profiles is if I need to be wide and I have a wide chest, then I guess I need to be low profile or moderate profile and not high. And while I understand why you would think that, and it's a good thought, it does not totally capture exactly what a profile means. And let me help explain that. I want to explain why. Let's choose a profile, moderate plus. I want to explain why a moderate plus profile implant can actually be wide or narrow. So here I have a moderate plus implant. It is 270 cc's. All right. That's what that looks like. Now I'm going to show you a moderate plus implant. That's 405 cc's. Look how different the diameter is. So now to help you understand the differences, this is the same profile. Let me show you both moderate plus very different diameters. This one is much larger. The difference is, is that now the volume is very different. 270 cc's, 405 cc's. So when you're asking, I have a wide chest, should I get high profile or moderate or low profile? I'll tell you the different profile implants come in different widths. Now let me give you a practical example of how this helps me choose an implant for you and how a profile fits into my decision making for helping you find the best implant for your body. The first thing I do is I measure your base width. So that's the distance from here to here on your chest, not the implant, but I'm keeping in mind this has got to fit on your chest wall. Okay, that's the starting point. Then I know. I'm going to show you this on my implant order form. I know you won't be able to see these details, but it's okay. There are a lot of implants here. I know that I'm going to find that measurement, that base width, and I'm going to find a range of implants that has a base width that's very similar to that. Okay. So then let's say you had a base width measurement of somewhere around 11. Okay. So I can cheat up or down a little bit. So I'll say, okay, here are implants starting at a base width of 10 and a half to 11 and a half. And I can either go with a 215 cc implant or a 295 cc implant. That's just one profile. Okay. Now let's say mm, I want to go bigger than that. Then I'll go over to the high profiles and I'll say for that base width of about 11, what is a high profile going to give me? For about 11, I'm going to be able to get into the 300s, 355. So it's you're not destined to have a lower profile or a moderate profile just because your chest width is wider because I can find options for your measurement in different profiles. 
So the next question is, how big do you want to be? If you were telling me for a width of 11 centimeters that you would like to be smaller, then I choose whatever profile it is that gives me the smaller CC option. That's gonna be a lower profile or moderate profile implant. If you're telling me I want to be as full as possible for my base width, then I choose for you something that's a higher profile. Could be moderate, could be moderate plus, could be high. We play with it until we get within the range of the size of the volume that we want for you. There are other factors that are going to determine what size of implant I can fit into you. So first was base width. The second thing that I look at is how much breast tissue you have. So the thickness of your own breast tissue, which I can evaluate just by simply putting your breast tissue between my fingers and feeling that thickness. Anything that's above your pec muscle, how thick is that breast tissue? Okay, because that occup occupies some of the space of your breast and so we have to be able to fit both your breast tissue and the implant itself, all right? And the implant will also help make the breast tissue you already have look more augmented. So that plays a role. The third thing that I look at is going to be how filled out is your breast skin, okay? If you're very dense and you don't have extra skin, you have breast tissue and you have skin that fits perfectly over it and it's pretty tight and it's dense, this is gonna limit the size of an implant that I'm going to be able to fit into that breast with a tight skin envelope. Um, this is often with women who've never had a child before, never had big weight changes before, never breastfed before. So tighter skin envelope, tighter, denser, younger breast. Um, often you can't, you're limited in how big you can go safely. Now, if your breast is deflated, so typical for moms, typical for women who have had weight loss. So you have more skin than you have tissue on the inside. That means that I can actually go bigger with my implant because I have more to fill out. I have a lot more stretch. And these are all of the things that I'm thinking about when I'm helping you make that decision. Base width, that measurement determines how wide from here to here I need that implant to be to fit your chest well. Okay, breast tissue, how much breast tissue you have that's gonna fit on top of it. And then also how much you're stretching. So let's say you come in, you have a base width of 11. I know I have this range of implants from all the profiles of a certain number of CCs that I could fit into your breast. I'm not going to choose or guide you towards a high profile, high CC implant for your chest width if you have tight, dense breast tissue and not a lot of stretch because it won't fit. Now, let's talk about what that means for how you're going to look. I think it's really important to understand that the profile of the implant does not always translate to your appearance because your breast tissue plays a role the stretch of your breast, the denseness of your breast, the tightness of your skin envelope, or the looseness, the you know elasticity of your breast envelope, this all plays a role. And so often people say, well, show me a person with a high implant, a high profile implant in so that I can see exactly what it looks like. And that can be misleading unless you have a picture of a person, the same person with the same chest without any weight changes with you know, a low profile and a moderate profile and a high profile all at different points, which is hard to do because that means you're having surgeries to change these implants out. Unless you're showing it in the same person with the same amount of breast tissue, it can look very different. And so it's not a good way to choose an implant for a patient or for yourself based upon how a particular type of implant looks in somebody else. Because I have seen cases where, you know, this is a pretty um, average implant, okay, average size, moderate profile, 325 cc. This would fit in a lot of women. There are some women that this can look very big, very full, very augmented because of the qualities of their existing breast. 
there are other women, women that this would get lost in and it wouldn't even fill out their breast. And then there are other women that it would fill out nicely, but it would be really subtle and a natural looking aug. In the past, plastic surgery groups have actually done studies or just gathered together women who have different breast implants, different shaped breast implants. And they lined up a group of plastic surgeons who were experienced in breast surgery and they had them fill out a form that said, you know, what type of implant they thought the women had. And the results of this study were that experienced plastic surgeons who do breast surgery frequently cannot tell you, looking at a naked woman, what kind of implant is in her body. And I think that is the most telling thing. So this is why when you ask me, should I get high profile? Should I get moderate profile? Should I get low profile? I go back to the beginning and start with the way in which I get to that answer. And it's not by just picking it out of a catalog. It's by measuring you, looking at your breast quality, looking at your skin quality, looking at your stretch, looking at your density, and then talking to you about how you'd like to fill what we have. I hope that makes sense and I hope that answers some of these questions and I would love to help expound more. So please ask me more questions and I'm really looking forward to helping you all understand breast implants, breast augmentation a little bit better.